so that's my take on the on the battlefield. It's um, it's a bloody um, meat grinder operation where Russia is in control, uh, but Russia is not committed to any timeline. Russia is committed to accomplishment of objectives. And again, the you know the fact that the United States and Europe are pouring money into Ukraine, it uh, changes the game. It's a game changer. It doesn't mean Russia loses. Russia is not going to lose this war, but the game has changed. New realities have come into play that Russia has to adapt to. And so I think Russia's strategy is a strategy of um, patience and perseverance. Um, just wait and let the situation develop in a way that's to the benefit, exclusive benefit of Russia. And in this case, that means that the Russians are killing far more Ukrainians than can be replaced. And the Russians are ensuring that whatever replacements they bring in exceeds the number of Russians that the Ukrainians are killing. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our live commentary on the unfolding events on the Ukraine war map. We wish you a pleasant, healthy, and vibrant midweek day. To kick off today, we have some fascinating updates. Yesterday, Russia decisively captured Yurushin and Staromayersky, showcasing yet again Ukraine's glaring defense flaws. Inspector Scott Ritter's insights provide a critical perspective on these developments. Buckle up. Because the truth is far more revealing than what the mainstream media would have you believe. These victories are more than just territorial gains. They reveal deep-rooted strategic incompetence within the Ukrainian military. This isn't just about losing land, it's about losing credibility on the global stage, showing once more that Ukraine's tactics are outdated and ineffective. The implications of these defeats extend beyond the battlefield, shaking the very foundation of Ukraine's military strategy and exposing the hollowness of Western support. Ukraine's age-old habit of over-fortifying their frontline defenses while neglecting the rear is laughably evident. As Inspector Scott Ritter has noted, we've seen this in Avdivivka and now in Euroshane and Staromayersky. It's almost like they're setting themselves up for failure. Their strategy seems stuck in a bygone era, unable to adapt to modern warfare's demands. They pour resources into these fortifications, creating a false sense of security, only to watch them crumble when the front line is breached. Ukraine's first line of defense might look impressive, but once breached, the subsequent lines crumble like a house of cards. Russia, on the other hand, employs flexible, mobile defense tactics. Their initial lines are designed to delay and alert, not to hold. Mobile units equipped with self-propelled artillery and armored vehicles ambush the enemy and relocate swiftly, minimizing losses. This dynamic approach ensures that Russian forces remain unpredictable and highly effective, constantly outmaneuvering their Ukrainian counterparts. The strategic depth and foresight displayed by Russia starkly contrasts with Ukraine's rigid and outdated methods, Ukrainian forces stuck in static defenses are easy targets for Russia's agile and adaptive tactics. This failure to innovate and adapt is a critical flaw in Ukraine's military doctrine, leading to repeated and predictable defeats. Let's dive deeper into the recent Russian advancements in these regions, showing the world how true military strategy works. Turning our focus to Staromayersky and Yurushain, these regions have seen intense conflict. Inspector Scott Ritter's analysis has highlighted the critical nature of these areas. After Ukraine's overhyped counteroffensive last year, they managed to reclaim several areas from Russia, including Rivopil, Neskuchny, and Storoshev. But what was the real cost? A temporary gain achieved through significant losses, highlighting yet again their flawed strategy. The Ukrainian leadership touted these as major victories, but the reality on the ground tells a different story. Each recaptured town came at a high price, draining resources and morale. But by the end of 2023, Ukraine's steam had run out. Despite pouring resources into fortifying Staromayersky and Yurochin, Russia's patient superior strategy have paid off. These reclaimed positions paved the way for Russia to target the strategic Velika region, potentially turning the tide of this conflict. This breakthrough isn't just a military victory, it's a testament to Russia's strategic foresight and Ukraine's lack of tactical depth. While Ukraine fortified these positions, Russia systematically identified weaknesses and exploited them with precision. The Ukrainian forces, spread thin and demoralized, were unable to mount an effective defense. The fall of these towns is a clear indicator of the diminishing strength and resolve of Ukrainian forces, as they face an adversary who is both strategic and unyielding. The hollowness of Western military aid and training is laid bare, 
as Ukraine continues to flounder despite the support. Next, we'll delve into the strategic brilliance behind these victories and the sheer incompetence of Ukrainian defenses. Russian forces, under the steady leadership of General Gerasimov, have reclaimed nearly 60 towns in 2024 alone. Their approach is steady and relentless, focusing on strategic, long-term victories rather than short-term media spectacles, unlike Ukraine. As highlighted by Inspector Scott Ritter, Gerasimov's leadership is characterized by strategic depth and operational flexibility, starkly contrasting with Ukraine's chaotic and reactive tactics. Despite varied analyses, General Gerasimov's presence in Rostov on Don signals ongoing strategic discussions and future plans. Ukraine's desperate missile attacks, including ATACMS strikes, resulted in minimal damage, further highlighting their ineptitude. The Ukrainian leadership seems more interested in flashy, media-friendly operations than in sustainable military success. Gerasimov, meanwhile, exemplifies the Russian focus on strategic patience and calculated moves, ensuring each victory lays the groundwork for the next. The disparity in command competence is stark. While Gerasimov and his generals plan meticulously, and execute with precision Ukraine flounders with last minute, reactionary tactics resulting in needless loss of life and material. The contrast between the two sides is glaring with Russia's disciplined approach outshining Ukraine's haphazard efforts. Western backers continue to pour resources into a failing strategy, hoping for miracles that never materialize. Let's explore the recent Russian offensives and their impacts, showing how a real military operates. Recently, Russia launched Iskander missile strikes in Kramatorsk, obliterating a base and two warehouses containing 400 tons of munitions. Another strike in Odessa destroyed key Ukrainian assets, proving the precision and effectiveness of Russian military might. These strikes are not random acts of aggression, but carefully calculated moves to dismantle Ukraine's military infrastructure piece by piece. Each strike cripples Ukraine's ability to sustain its war effort, demoralizing its forces and showcasing the might of the Russian military. The precision with which these strikes are executed leaves little room for Ukraine to regroup or retaliate effectively. In a significant offensive near Ugldar, an Iskander missile strike incapacitated 160 Ukrainian National Guard soldiers. These coordinated attacks reflect Russia's relentless pursuit of strategic targets and Ukraine's ongoing failures. The Ukrainian military, already stretched thin, faces demoralization and attrition as Russia's methodical strategy continues to dismantle their defenses. Each strike is a lesson in military precision, leaving Ukrainian forces scrambling to respond. The destruction of key assets and high casualties among Ukrainian forces highlight the effectiveness of Russia's approach. Meanwhile, Ukrainian attempts at counterattacks have been futile, further demonstrating their lack of strategic direction. The effectiveness of Russian tactics continues to expose the weaknesses in Ukrainian defenses, creating a growing sense of inevitability about the outcome of this conflict. Western media may continue to spin tales of Ukrainian resilience, but the facts on the ground tell a different story. Now, let's turn our attention to the escalating missile warfare and Ukraine's futile attempts at retaliation. Ukraine's attempts to retaliate by targeting Russian air defense systems with ATACMS cluster missiles achieved predictably poor results. As Inspector Scott Ritter pointed out, Russia's precision strikes in Kyiv targeted the SBU headquarters, eliminating several high-ranking officers involved in notorious operations against Russia. These strikes not only decimate Ukraine's command structure, but also serve as a stark warning to those who dare to undermine Russian security. The efficiency and precision of these strikes underscore the superiority of Russian military intelligence and capabilities. Uh, despite Ukraine's efforts, Russia's strategic patience and tactical superiority continue to dominate. This underscores the effectiveness of Russia's layered defense and strategic foresight. The Ukrainian leadership, with its hasty and poorly coordinated responses, appears woefully outmatched. The contrast between Russia's calculated precision and Ukraine's desperate flailing could not be more stark. Each failed Ukrainian strike is a testament to their lack of foresight and strategic planning. The results speak for themselves while Russia systematically dismantles Ukraine's military capabilities, Ukrainian forces are left reeling, unable to mount a coherent defense. The continuing effectiveness of Russian missile strikes underscores the ongoing disparity between the two sides with Ukraine struggling to find an effective counter. Western promises of support ring hollow as Ukraine's military infrastructure crumbles under relentless Russian precision. Let's now address the environmental and social impacts of the conflict, which Ukraine is clearly struggling to manage. The conflict's toll is exacerbated by extreme weather. 
With temperatures soaring to 41 DT, combat operations become grueling. Power outages across Ukraine, resulting from attacks on electrical infrastructure, have sparked protests in cities like Poltava, Dnepro, and Odessa. These power outages are not mere inconveniences, but symptoms of a failing state struggling to maintain basic services amid relentless military pressure. The civilian population, already burdened by the war, faces additional hardships as essential services break down. The frequent power outages have led to widespread discontent, highlighting the government's inability to protect its citizens from the cascading effects of the conflict. Amid these challenges, Ukraine's reliance on conscripted prisoners further highlights its dire situation. The use of poorly motivated and untrained personnel in fierce battles reflects a broader systemic failure. These conscripts thrown into the meat grinder face almost certain defeat against seasoned Russian troops. The social unrest and growing dissatisfaction among Ukrainian citizens paint a grim picture of a nation on the brink. The extreme weather only compounds the misery, adding another layer of hardship to an already dire situation. The increasing protests and societal breakdown point to a country unable to cope with the pressures of a prolonged conflict. As the war drags on, the resilience of the Ukrainian population is tested to its limits, with many losing faith in their leadership's ability to steer the nation through this crisis.